Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem bitwise and of numbers range. We're given two integers left and right. Right will be greater than or equal to the left value. And very simply, we just want to return the bitwise and of all the numbers in this range. What is a bitwise and? Well, take the number, uh, let's say five, and the binary number six, and then the binary number seven. And to bitwise and these is to basically take every single column, and if all of them are one, then we put a one in the output. If that's not true, not all of them are one, clearly in this case, one of them is a zero, then we put a zero in the output. So do the same thing for the second column, and there is a zero, so we put a zero here. This one though, all of them are one. So now we put a one here, and this is binary, but the integer representation, base 10, it would be the number four. This can actually be accomplished pretty easily. What we could do is just take the bitwise and of these two numbers, then we'd get the output. It would look like one, zero, zero. And then we would take the bitwise and of this result with the remaining number, and that would look like one zero zero as well. To solve this problem in linear time is pretty easy. Just iterate over the range of numbers and just keep doing the bitwise and. By the way, in terms of code, if you have two numbers x and y to bitwise and them, it's pretty easy. You just put the ampersand sign in between. So we know how to solve this problem in linear time, but given that it's a medium, it's probably not gonna be that easy. This is actually gonna give you time limit exceeded. Look at the third example. It's gonna be a whole lot of iterations to do that. So the question is, can we do better? Even if you don't know, if you, even if you're not an expert when it comes to binary numbers, it should be pretty obvious what kind of time complexity solution we're looking for, either a constant time solution or a log n time solution, because those are typically what we get to improve a linear time solution. So let's focus on log n. How could we possibly solve this problem in log n? Well, no matter how big a number is, when it's represented in terms of binary, and by the way, this is roughly two to the power of 32 minus one, I think. I guess for a signed integer, it might be two to the 31 minus one, but the point is that it can be stored in a 32-bit integer. So the guarantee for us is that no matter what number we have, when we look at the binary representation of it, we are not gonna have more than 32 bits. So to solve this problem, let's try to do it bit by bit. And so I'm actually gonna show you two solutions to this problem. The first one is actually more complicated. It's gonna be a log n solution. Once you kind of understand that solution, it's a little bit easier to get to the clever solution, which is also log n. But if I showed you that from the beginning, it would kind of make you more confused, I think, because it's not intuitive to come up with. The first one I'll show you is a bit more intuitive to come up with, at least in my opinion. So let's look at an example. Suppose we are looking at the range from seven to 10. That means our parameter left would be seven, our parameter or right would be 10. What we are kind of asking is when we go column by column, that's what I'm going to do. Column by column, I'm going to build the result. So assume I have 32 bits, but I'm just going to, of course, draw four of them because we don't want to have to do everything, even though our numbers are pretty small here. So basically, I'm trying to figure out what to put in each of these four spots. So starting with the first column, I want to know, are all of these one? And if they are, I put a one in the output here. And if they're not, I put a zero there. Or let's just assume I leave it as is. When we initialize a result, let's assume we initialize it with all zeros. Now I'm here. I'm actually going to do this starting from the left number. I'm going to look at every single bit of the left number. And I'm going to go like this. If this bit is a zero, then we don't even care about the others, right? It doesn't matter what these are. They could be all ones for all we care. But if this is a zero, then of course we have to put a zero in the output. So that's easy so far, right? Now, in this case, it's not a zero. It's a one. So now the question we're asking is, in any of these other spots, is there going to be a zero? How do we answer that question without looking at all of the numbers? Well, it's easier than you think. This is the ones place, right? In that place, it's either a zero or a one. It's going to be alternating. In other words, it's going to look like this, and then it's going to look like this, and then it's going to look like this. And that's kind of what you see here, don't you? It alternates. So the question we ask ourselves is the range from the left number, which we're currently at seven, and the biggest number 10, is that difference greater than or equal to one? Is 10 minus seven greater than or equal to one? If it is, 
then we guarantee, we know for sure there's going to be a zero somewhere. So in this case, that's true. So there has to be a zero here. We can't put a one in the output. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to leave a zero there. Now, when we look at the next bit here, we see it's a one. It's not a zero. So we can't just immediately put a zero in the output. But now we want to know from here, how much do we need to add to this to guarantee that there's a zero in this column? Because that's what we're trying to figure out. Is there a zero in this column or not? Well, if you were just to look at this number, if you were just to look at one zero without even including this, you would find that we can change it to a one one by adding one and then we change it to a zero zero by adding one again because then we'll put a one over here. So basically the range of numbers has to be two for us to guarantee that there's going to show up a zero in this column. That's without including the ones place here. Now we're not allowed to do that. We kind of have to look at the original numbers. So let's go back and look at this one, one. How much do we have to add to this to guarantee a zero shows up here? Just one, because the next number in this sequence is going to be one, zero, zero in this binary sequence. So the range we're looking for here is going to be one. So once again, we're going to ask ourselves, 10 minus 7, is it greater than or equal to 1? And it is. And again, you see the next number that we have here shows up as a 0, just like in the first bit. That's why we're only comparing with 1. So once again, we know that there's going to be a 0 in this column. Third column, once again, the bit is 1. But how much do we need to add to this number to guarantee that we have a zero in this column. Once again, it's just one. How do I know that? How did I figure that out? I draw the sequence of numbers to you, right? This is the first number. This is what we have so far. And the next number in the sequence would be this. The way I'm getting this second number is just by taking the most significant bit here, which is a one, and then shifting it to the left by one. Or if you just consider like this, the zeroth bit, this is the first, this is the second, this is the third. If we're at the second bit, then I want a one in the third bit and I want the rest of them to be zero. And then I can take that number and subtract from it this current number that we're at. And that's how I'm getting the range. So you can see this is eight, this is seven. If I subtract those two, I get eight minus seven, which is a one. And then we wanna know is the difference that we have 10 minus seven, this range of values, is it less than this number? Because if it's less than that, then we can say a zero doesn't show up here. But in this case, it's not less than that. So we have to once again, put a zero in the output. I know this is kind of confusing. I'm having a hard time trying to explain it as well, because it's just a lot of like binary math. It's going to be a lot of binary operations, bitwise operations when I show you the code. The last part of this example, we're going to find that there is a zero over here. So then we would just put a zero in the output and we probably would in the code continue up to 32 times. But you'll see that there is a zero in all of those uh, positions. So uh, we'll like automatically put zeros here. Now, let's make this a little bit more interesting because obviously this was a pretty simple example. We just kind of repeated the same thing over and over again. Let's now assume that we're doing these two. So looking at this bit, it's a one. This part so far, which I'm going to draw down here as a one, and then we want to put a one in the next most significant position, which would be over here. So then I'm going to put a one here and then the rest is going to be zero. We're going to take these two numbers and like subtract them. So we're going to do this binary number minus zero one. This is two minus one. This is one. So the significance of this is this is how much we need to add to the number nine to guarantee that a zero shows up here. And of course, it's going to be one. So we know that there's going to be a zero in the output here. Next, we look at this zero. It's a zero. So we guarantee that there's a zero in this column. So we put a zero here for this as well. We put a zero here. Now, this is going to be a little bit more interesting. We have a one over here. What we have here so far is one zero zero one for us to have a zero in this column. This might be the part where it finally starts to make sense to you for us to guarantee that there's a zero in this column. What is the smallest number after this number that would guarantee that there's a zero in this column. That number would look like this, one, zero, 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 right? What we're gonna do now here is take this big number and subtract from it this number. So this number I think is 16, this number is nine, and then we get seven. So we wanna know now is the difference in the actual range of numbers that we have, is it at least seven? 
It's not. It's less than seven. So therefore, we can't say that there's a zero here because we would need this number to be at least 16 for us to guarantee that there's a zero here. But there's not. It's only 10. Therefore, a zero will never show up. If you want to see what that sequence of numbers would look like, this is what 11 looks like. And then 12 would look something like this. And I could draw the rest out. 13 would look like this. 14 would look like this. 15 would look like that. And none of those numbers has a zero in this spot. So that's the intuition of what I'm trying to do here. This is finally the bit where we would end up putting a one. I know this isn't super intuitive. I'm going to quickly show you the code for this solution. And I'm going to show you the intuition. You might have noticed there is a shortcut we can actually take with what we just did right now. So I will walk through the code right now for that solution I just showed you just for educational purposes, but this solution is more difficult than the second one I'm going to show you. So uh, in case you don't like this one, that's okay. We are going to iterate 32 times. So I'm going to have a pointer doing that. Well, just a uh, index, I guess, doing that. And then we want the current bit from the left number. We want the ith bit. And so for us to get that isn't super difficult. What we do is take left, shift it to the right by i, and then we do bitwise and with one. That will zero out every bit from here except the rightmost bit. And that will tell us what the ith bit is in left. So this is what I'm going to put. I'm going to store that in bit. If this is not one, then we can just continue. We don't have to add anything to the result. The ith bit in the result will stay zero. Then I want to know. If right minus left is less than that difference I was talking about, because if it's actually less than the difference, then we put a one in the output. If it's not less than the difference, then we don't do anything. Now, if it is, this is what we're going to do in the output. We're going to put a one in the ith position. We can do that by taking one, shifting it to the left by I. So if it's the zeroth bit, we don't shift it at all. If it's the first bit, we shift it by one. If it's the second, we'll shift it by a two. And then we'll do logic or with the result. How exactly do we get the difference in the first place? The one thing I didn't really talk about in the explanation was that if we have a number such as a one, zero, one, zero, and let's say this is the position that we're currently at and we want these bits, we want everything from here to the right. Well, what we're going to do is get this number zero, one, zero, zero. We're going to take this number and mod it by this number because that will remove everything from the left and it'll keep everything to the right. So in other words, I'm going to take the left number that we have, the original left number, and I'm going to mod it by one shifted to the left by I plus one because we're here. This is the ith bit. We want a one here. So we'll do I plus one. And then we'll take left and mod it by that. And that should give us, let's just call it the remainder. These variables, I will admit, are not like the most descriptive. And so with the remainder, now what do we want? Well, the remainder tells us this part, right? And now what we actually want to do is just take this number and subtract from it the remainder, kind of like I did in the drawing part. So we would take diff is equal to this number, which we just got by taking this. So I'm actually just going to copy and paste that. And then from that, I'm going to subtract the remainder. Like I said, this is the more difficult solution, I think, but this is the one I actually came up with on my first try because the next one is just a lot more clever. So I ran the code on the left. You can see it does work. It's pretty efficient. The next one is a lot easier to write, though. Looking at what I just showed you, it becomes kind of clear that if the size of our range from the small number to the big number is at least one, or let's think about the difference, the difference of the range is at least one, then we know there's going to be a zero in the first column. If the difference is at least two, then we know there's going to be a zero in the second column. Because a difference of two would mean that three different numbers show up there and that would look something like this. One, zero, one, one, and then zero, one, and then a one would go here. If the difference is greater than four, we know for sure there's going to be a zero in this column. So the intuition here is that the bits that remain constant, the ones that will be matching that won't have zeros in them are going to be prefixes. If there's a string here of ones, and like this is a zero, then these are going to stay constant. I could add a one, one, one here as well. But if for whatever reason there's actually a zero in one of these, that would imply that our range is really, really big 
and therefore there must be a zero in all of these other columns as well. Like every single column is gonna have a zero. How could you possibly have something that looks like this where there's a zero here, but not a zero in this column? It's not possible. And you kind of can reason about that when I talked about going from 10 all the way up until 15. Look where the zeros start to show up. You have a zero, one, one, and then something like this, and then something like this, and then something like this. The most significant bits are the ones that are least likely to change. So knowing that, we can do something very, very clever. We can just take the number left and right. Suppose we have left here and then right here. We can just compare them. Is left equal to right? No. So what do we do? There must be a zero in the first column if they're not equal. So what we do is we remove the rightmost bit by taking each of these numbers and shifting it to the left by one. So now we compare this with this over here. Are they equal? No. So there must be a zero in this column, which there is, and we just have it crossed out. And when you look at it, these bits actually did match each other, but that doesn't imply that there isn't a zero in between that range somewhere. And the reason these two numbers weren't entirely equal is because this one is a zero and this one is a one, which if that's ever the case, then there must be some zeros in between over there. It's just mathematically impossible that there isn't. So now we'd delete these. Now we compare this and this. They're not equal. These bits don't match each other. So we pop them. And now we end up here with a zero and a one. And these aren't equal either. So we'd remove them. So ultimately here, we would end up returning zero. Let's look at an example where we wouldn't. Let's look at the other example, comparing these two numbers, looking at this bit. So are these two equal? Nope. So chop off this. Are these two equal? Nope. Chop off this. Are these two now equal? Yes, they actually are. So what do we return? We want to return the bitwise and of the two original numbers. And we found that all bits of these match each other except for these first two bits. So we just want to zero those ones out. So how do we do that? Well, we can just take these numbers and we know both of them are equal. So we can either look at this one or this one and we would shift it to the left by how many times we just iterated. So we iterated twice here. So we take one zero, shift it to the left by two, and then we'd get one zero zero and another zero. So this would be the result. So this is kind of the clever way of doing it. Just keep comparing the numbers and chopping off this bit until they are equal and then just shift back however many times we removed. So let's code up this solution. Here, I'm actually just going to declare a pointer I just to keep track of how many times we've shifted. Other than that, we're just gonna check this. Is left unequal to right? If it is, then remove the rightmost bit. We can do that pretty easily. Just shift this to the right by one, shift this one to the right by one as well. And also don't forget to increment the I pointer. And then before you return, we can return either left or right because they're equal. But before you actually return it, make sure you restore the bits that we removed by setting them to zero. So shift this to the left now by I. That's the whole code. It's not super easy to reason about, is it though? I ran it, as you can see, it works. In terms of big O time complexity, this would still be roughly log N depending on the size of the input. And I think in the previous solution, we probably didn't have to iterate 32 times. We could have probably put a break somewhere, but I didn't want to focus too much on that solution. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.